Hi, my name is Carl, or Karu, whatever side of the spectrum you're on, and I for years have heard of the wonderful world of D&D. However, I didn't know anything about D&D until seven months ago. My longtime friend Beth had been spamming me for ages to check out this series Critical Role, and I was simply too busy not caring. I basically forever believed that D&D was this world of nerds in cloaks and wizard hats playing Dungeons and Dragons in their mom's basement, which at least in today's era isn't quite the case anymore. After five years of anime conventions and content of such, I decided to change most of my channel to that Gucci geek content, and due to it, rethought the idea of Critical Role. And as I did this, you can only imagine what my next thought was. What the fuck do you mean four hours per episode? I then decided to give it at least one hour and I was completely sold. I've always been a big fan of voice acting, writing and gaming, so to see how these voice actors brought this world together quickly pulled me into wanting to know more about D&D. Some thinking happened and I soon started a campaign with Beth and some of my current best friends. This is the journey through TA. So to start you guys off, I'm not going to start with the beginning of the story. I'm going to start at a very crucial point in time with no context to build suspense and grab your attention tactfully. So, uh... <laughs> Shit! Uh, uh, what a world just out? Net, net 20, net, net 20, net 20, yes, net 20! So our party finds themselves traveling into the middle of the continent, Estrada, getting into the city, Stelebra. We were basically informed that we could get some important information about some missing people we were looking for and we were sent to a man called Bastel. Bastel was an acquaintance of an acquaintance, but they told us that as long as we were with her, we'd be good. As we entered Stelevra and had our first conversation with Bastel, some stuff happened left and right, days went by and simply exploring the city, getting us in all kinds of fun shenanigans that almost got us killed every day. Wait, ho hold up. Hey! You! Are you following us? Huh? Wait a minute. Yes, he is following us. Are you trying to pick a fight, bro? <laughs> Come on, then! Kick his ass, boy. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh, shit. I got stabbed. Just wait, boy. I'm bringing a potion. Add on. Fools! This is where you meet your demise. Uh, take this. <sighs> no, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Your uncle sent what me a you just egg? say, huh? <laughs> I wonder which other kind of pastries this city has. Wanna have a test of my special drink? It's on my house. Do it, pussy. I don't want to have it. <laughs> okay, that was disgusting. I don't trust the old guy. But I throw it up before it does anything to my body. <laughs> I got a free drink. Did you just say that you drank a sketchy drink from a sketchy old man? Spit it out. No. Spit it out. No, I won't. And I'm just fine. You just can't have it that I got a drink from a cool guy like him earlier, despite my age. Spit it out, guy. <laughs> you motherfucker, I'll cut you another cunt. I swear I'll burn them in their sleep. Hey, you there! You seem bored out of your mind! I got some interesting animals you might be interested in. Huh? Well, what do you have? Well, first up is a very interesting bird. That's right. His name is Bard, because he sings a lot. Get it? Second one I have is a lizard with a little hat. He has a little hat! The third one is majestic. This is the long fawn from the mountains, north, south, east, west of Estrada, with majestic ancient wish-granting fur. It's soft, it's clean, it's, it's cute, and- I want the lion. Wait a minute, what? I'm taking the lion. It talked to me. Uh, you know, uh, uh, kid, just take him. Just take him for free. <laughs> until Bastel finally contacted us again to have a meeting. When the party made their way into the building, there was quite a lineup of people awaiting us. A girl from the previous town, doing a bad job of cloaking herself and hiding her identity, 
a strange dude with a snake around his neck. The tiefling girl and owner of the inn we were staying at that Xanthus had a one night stand with the night before. By the way, my character is Xanthus. Bastel and his blink dog that constantly kept blinking from place to place and our druid Aaron had an obsession with. I want to thank all of you for coming today. Ooh, such a little cutie pie. The reason I called you all out here in such short notice is because... You're a good little boy, aren't ya? There's been some dangerous activities happening. Can I trust all of you with this information? Ooh. Goo -goo. I love you, dog! We were talking and questioning each other, keeping our fingers crossed behind our backs the entire time like every other business meeting you've been to, and out of nowhere we heard screaming and panic outside, seeing that the city was in complete chaos. Xanthus then ran outside instantly with Galahad to keep citizens safe and see what's happening, while Edon and his eeny meeny baby boy goblin Rekka ran to the balcony with Bastel to look down at the chaos. The rest of the people at the meeting all yeeted into oblivion without a real goodbye, so... Stuff was going down. Upon further inspection, it was clear that the city was under attack by goblins and gnolls. Edon, our special boy, feeling the urge to help the citizens, grabbed Rekka and ran out of Bastel's place into the hallway and rolled a nat 1, falling and dropping Rekka down the stairs. Meanwhile, on Xanthus and Galahad's side, as the two made their way into the chaos northwest of town, they spotted a group of goblins and gnolls burning citizens and boying everybody left and right, as well as kidnapping them. Son of a bitch. So, some extremely badass fighting happens, cheeks are getting clapped, but suddenly Galahad a little too much on his plate that he bargained ah! for. Get it? Galahad. <laughs> Eron and Bastel made it to the scene and Bastel ran off to another part in the chaos casting some spells and as Eron saw the chaos of Galahad having some trouble again, <laughs> he ran in and suddenly for the first time turned into a lion, going absolute Whoa, beast me. mode. We made our way to Galahad to help him and it seemed as if he wasn't getting back up. Galahad, get up, it's not your time yet. Fuck it, don't leave us yet. The goblins by now collected a group of people in their cart and took them with them. And out of nowhere, a figure familiar to Sentis came running in, taking out the enemy left and right. Wait, wait a minute, what the fuck? In the meantime, things were looking grim for Galahad. <sighs> fuck. <laughs> and with this short-lived agony and anxiety, the gods seem to have given our young Galahad another chance. As he woke up. <laughs> mm. I finally found you. Was about time you did. Good to see you again, did ya? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, this happiness didn't last long. Guys, where is Rekka? I... I cannot find him. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, stuff is getting quite interesting from here. I'm quite new to the indie content, so I really hope you guys are interested to continue following this journey. Uh, next episode is going to be the story of how we met Rekka, and the one after that is going to be the rescue mission. Give this video a like to motivate me to not be lazy and perhaps consider subscribing to be part of my Gucci Geek Squad. Okay, that is not a real. Th uh, we're not. See you next video.